ratios are used to describe quantities of different ingredients in a mixture. Imagine ratios, imagine mixtures without ratios. That's unimaginable. Pharmacists make up medicines using ratios. Builders in, uh, in the process of trying to build, they use ratios. Good morning, everyone. This is Rewan Haru presenting Junior Certificate Mathematics lesson. And the topic is ratios. I will later be joined by a student who will be helping me in today's task. But before we can start, let us have a look at the objective of this lesson. The lesson objective says dividing quantities in a given ratio. That is, you are given quantities, and then we'll be dividing them in a given ratio. And the lesson notes that I'm having here with me says ratio compares values. Now, like we said, every time when we talk about ratios, we are comparing values. And then a ratio says how much one thing is compared to another. This is simply to stress the first point, which says ratio compares values. Now, let me invite Mwari, who has just joined me here, to ask a question, which will help us develop this topic. Good day, everybody. I am Mwari Mashiaku. How do you divide a quantity in a given ratio? Can you please give an example and discuss it to elaborate on this objective? Thank you, Mwari. Remember, your question will also help, will, uh, will also benefit other students home. Let us have an example which will help us answer your question. The example say divide 600 grams in the ratio 3 is to 2. This is our ratio. And then the quantity is 600 grams. So we are to divide the 600 in the ratio 3 is to 2. Think of three to two, uh, 600 being divided in the ratio of in five parts. Where do we get the five parts? It is the 3 plus 2. This gives us 5. It's the 3 plus 2, and then this gives us 5. Now, what will the 3 parts get from the 600 grams? 3 parts will be, 3 parts will be, it's a 3 divided by 5 multiplied by 600 grams. 5 into 5 is once. 5 into 6 it's 1. And then remainder 1. 5 into 10 is 2. 5 into 0 is 0. So this is 120 times 3. And then what is 120 times 3? 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 2 is 6. And then 3 times 1 is 3. So the 3 parts will get 360 grams from the 600. And then what about the two parts? Because we have managed to calculate the three parts. Remember, the question says we are to divide in the ratio 3 to 2. It doesn't say find out what three parts represent. So we'll have to go then find out what two parts will represent. The two parts will be two parts will be the two parts will be 2 divided by 5 times 600 grams. And then what do we have? 5 into 5, once. 5 into 6, this is 1, remainder 1. 5 into 10 is 2. And then 5 into 0 is 0. We now have 2 times 120. And then the answer will be 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2. So, so the two parts will, will be represented by 240 grams. We have now managed to divide 600 in the ratio 3 is to 2. Three parts will get 360 grams and then two parts will get 240 grams. We can also look at another example to try and uh, stress this point. Another example say divide 200 pula in the ratio 1 is to 4. We are to divide 200 pula, which is a quantity here, in the ratio 1 is to 4. 1 is to 4 is a ratio. 
we start by saying, let us assume that this is five parts. How do we get the five parts? It's one plus four. One plus four. This gives five. So it's five parts. And then, what will one part get? One part will be, one part will be, it's one divided by five, because the total of the uh, ratios is five. So it's one divided by five times 200. And then five into five is ones. Five into 20 is four. And then five into zero is zero. Now what do we have? We have one times 40. And then one times 40, this gives us 40. This gives us 40. So the answer is a 40 puller. This is the answer. The one part will get 40 puller. What about four? Let us check out what four parts we get. Four parts. Four parts will be it's four divided by five because the total of the ratio there is five. So it's four divided by five times 200. Remember, the quantity is 200. 5 into 5 is 1. 5 into 20 is 4. And then 5 into 0 is 0. We now have 4 times 40. Now, what is 4 times 40? 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 4 is 16. So, this is 160 pula. So, our answer is 160 pula. So, the four parts will get 160 pula. We can also check if at all the total of uh, the, the total of the one part and four part will give us the quantity 200. Let us check if we will get 200. The first one part is 40 pula. So, it's 40 plus... 160 is 40 puller plus 160 puller. This gives you 0 plus 0 is 0. 4 plus this is 10. Carry 1. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. So the answer is 200. This simply means we have managed to solve the problem that we had. So we can see that the total of the parts gives us 200 puller, which is the quantity that we started with. Let us go for a short break. When we come back, we'll continue with our lesson. Welcome back from the short break. We still have our learner here, Mwari. Remember, Mwari, the question you're asking here will help other learners home. So keep asking those questions because they benefit other learners. Thank you, sir, for the examples you have discussed. To understand this topic even more, can you please give examples of word problems and work it out? Thank you. You want me to deal with a situation where a ratio is given in a word problem. The example here with me will help you answer that question. The example says the ratio of goats to sheep in a crawl is four. The ratio of goats to sheep in a crawl is four is to three. There are 28 animals in a crawl. Find how many are goats. That is the first one. And then the second one, how many are sheep? So we start by finding the number of goats. We will have to start by saying, what is the total of the ratio? The total of the ratio is a four plus. So for, for goats, we are now calculating the number of goats. The total of the ratio is four plus three, which is seven. So this will be four divided by 7. It's 4 divided by 7 because the parts for goats is 4. You can see that it says the ratio of goats to sheep. Goats to sheep. So the 4 represent goats and then 3 sheep. So this will be 
four over seven times the total of the animals in the crawl. And then what is the total of the animals in the crawl? It's 28. So it's four over seven times 28. 28. And then this will be seven here once. Seven into 28 is four. It's four. And then this will mean how many goats do we have is four times four. This gives us 16. So there are 16 goats in that crawl. And then what about the number of sheep? Because it says, the first, says, the first question says we are defined the number of goats. We managed to find the number of goats to be 16. So there will be 16 goats in the crawl. What about sheep? The part which represents sheep is three. And then the total number of animals is 28. Now, sheep will be 3 divided by 7 times the total number of animals in the crawl, which is 28. 7 here, once. 7 into 28, 4. And then 3 times 4. What is 3 times 4? This is 12. Now, we've got 12 sheep in the crawl and then uh, 16 goats. The sum of 12 and 16 should give us the number of animals in the crawl. You can always check for yourself if, to, if you're told the answers that we got are correct. And let's check if they are correct. It's just 16, which is the number of goats, plus 12, giving you... 2 plus 6 is 8. It's 2 plus 6 is 8. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is 28. So there are 28 animals in the scroll. We can go on and look at another example to make you understand even better. It says, in a mathematics class, the ratio of boys to girls is 5 is to 8. If there is a total of 39 students, how many girls are there? So here, we are expected to find the number of girls. Number of girls. Now, the ratio is boys to girls. We must be very careful the way we write this. Don't write girls to boys because that way, it won't give you the correct answer. So this is boys to girls. And supposed to be 5 is to 8. These are the numerical values given. Ratio of boys to girls is 5 is to 8. Now, what is the total number of, what is the total number of ratio? The total number of ratio is a 5 plus, is 5 plus 8. And then 5 plus 8, 5 plus 8, giving us 13. This is 13. So the total number of ratio is 13. Now the question says, if there's a total of 39 students, how many are girls? We have to go and identify the part which represent girls in our ratio. So the part which represent girls in our ratio is 8. This is the part which represent girls. So to find the number of girls, we'll say 8 divided by 13, which is the total number of ratio, times the number of students, and the number of students is 39. So it's 13 times 39. And then what is 13 times 39? 13 into 13 is 1. 13 into 39 is 3. This simply means we now have, remember this is girls. You are looking for girls. The question says you have to find the number of girls. So the number of girls will be 8 times 3. And then what is 8 times 3? Take your calculator and then multiply if you are not sure. 8 times 3 will be 24. So there are 24 girls. This is the number of girls. This is the number of girls. You might as well have been asked to find the number of boys. But this question simply said find the number of girls. So what if we asked to find the number of boys? It's still the same thing. We simply have to say, let us identify the part. Let us look for the part which uh, represent boys. And then the part which represent boys is 5. So boys will be 
boys will be 5 divided by 13, because 13 is the total of the ratio there. So it's 5 divided by 13 multiplied by the total number of students, which is 39. And then uh, 13 into 13 once, 13 into 39, 3. So boys will be 15 times, rather three, 5 times 3 is 15. It's 5 times 3 is 15. So there will be 15 boys. And then you can as well check, does the number of girls and the number of boys give you the total number of students? Does it give you the number of students there? So let us check. If I told you I'm going to get 39, it's 24 plus 15. Let us check if they're going to get 39 because the number of girls and the number of boys should give us the total number of students. 5 plus 4 is 9, and then 1 plus 2 is 3. So this gives us 39, meaning our answers here are correct. There are 39 girls and then 15 boys. We have managed to solve this question. Welcome back from the short break. We are still with our learner here, and he still has another question to ask. And remember, you other learners, you are going to benefit from the question he will ask. Thank you, sir. I'm really enjoying this lesson. But what if the ratio of the quantities is given to more than two parts? How do you solve such, such, such problems? Thank you. You want me to deal with a situation whereby the ratios involve more than two parts. The example here is, is a ratio involving more than two parts, as we can see. The ratio is 4 to 3 to 2 to 5. So there are four parts. Now let us look at the question and then answer it. It says a concrete mixture is made of sand, cement, gravel, and water in the ratio 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 5. Then find the weight of each in a 714 kilograms of the mixture. So this is our quantity, 714 kilograms. And then we got sand represented by four, cement represented by three parts, gravel represented by two, and water represented by five parts. So let us find the weight of each in this mixture. We have to start by finding the total of the ratio. The total of four plus three plus two plus five. 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5. 4 plus 3, 7 plus 2, 9 plus 5 is 14. So this is 14, is the total of the ratio. We are now to find the weight of each. We'll start, we'll start by finding the weight of sand. Sand here is represented by four parts. Now let us find the weight of sand. It's 4 divided by sand is equals to Sand is equals to 4 divided by 14 times 714. 714. Take your calculator and then divide. We've got our calculator here. We are dividing 714 by 14. 14 here is once. And then what about 14 into 714? 714 by 14 is 51. So seven into, uh, 14 into 714 is 51. And then now, this simply means it's 4 times 51. This is the weight of sand. And then what is 4 times 51? 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So this simply means the sand will be 204 grams. And then what about, this is the weight of sand. Now what about the weight of, the other one that we expected to find is the weight of cement. Cement, the weight of cement will be, the part representing cement is 3. So this will be 3 divided by 14 
times 714. 14 into 14 once. 14 into 714 is 51. And this will be 3 times 51. What is 3 times 51? 3 times 51. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. This simply means the weight of cement is 153 grams. We have managed to find this, the weight of sand and the weight of cement. The last two will be finding the weight of gravel and that of water. Now, what, are the, what is the part representing gravel? It's two. So this will be gravel will be is 2 divided by 14 times 714. 14 here, once. 14 into 714 is 51. And then this simply means it's 2 times 51. It's 2 times 51. And then what is 2 times 51? 2 times 51. What are we going to get when we multiply 2 and 51? 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. So the weight of gravel is 102 grams. This is the weight of gravel. And then what will be the weight of the weight of water in this mixture? Water is represented by two by five parts. Water is represented by five parts. So to find the weight of water, it will be the weight of water now will be water will be five divided by fourteen times seven hundred and fourteen. Fourteen into fourteen once. 14 into 714 is 51. And then we are simply saying this is 5 times 51. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Meaning the weight of water in this mixture is 255 grams. This is how you work out questions involving more than two ratios. We managed to work this. Now, you can check if your total answers are correct by simply adding this. 204 plus 153 plus, plus 102 plus 255. They should give you the total of 714 kilograms, which is the total of the weight for the mixture. We have now come to the end of this lesson. Keep revising ratios till we meet again in the next lesson. Thank you.